So do you want to know what's going on in the Denver real estate market? Stick around. We're going to tell you. We're going to show you right now. Okay, it's another great day in Denver, Colorado. I'm Michelle Wise. And I'm Cheryl Crown. And we are living in Denver, Colorado. If you're thinking about making the move to Denver, or maybe you already live here and want to move within this great city of Denver, Colorado, then you've come to the right place. Because Michelle and I live here, we can give you the inside scoop on everything Denver. So please be sure to tap the bell below for notifications and subscribe to the channel. So you're the first to know the next time we drop a new video. Yep. And while we are realtors here in the great city of Denver, we make these videos to inform you. So if you are ready to make the move or maybe you just have further questions, then you've come to the right place. So give us a call, just text or send us an email. We'll give you all the information you need to know about eating, drinking, sleeping, working, having fun in Denver, Colorado. Michelle and I get calls and emails every single day and we personally respond to each and every one. So regardless of your time frame, we've totally got you covered. So with that, let's check out the Denver housing market in August, 2023. Yeah. Okay, so here we are, August, 2023, and there is so much going on with the real estate market. You turn on the news, it's on every channel. They're talking about interest rates. They're talking about inventory. They're talking about people moving, not moving. What is going on here? Especially in Denver. Especially in Denver. Yeah. I think that feeling of uncertainty is just resonating with everyone right now. And there are so many factors that are contributing to that. Yeah. We're just, we just want to go through all of that with you today and just let you know from our professional perspective and the things that we're seeing as professionals in the real estate uh, industry, why we think what's happening is happening. Yeah, yeah. If you look at 2023, and not just August, we're in August right now, but if you look at 2023 and everything that's kind of precluded up until now, it's affecting what's happening today. And, you know, we're at a state of high interest rates, according to the mass media. But if you ultimately look at interest rates where they are today in relationship to where they've been, since so they've historically been tracking interest rates, we are pretty much dead set average. Oh. So, you know, 7% or 7-ish percent seems crazy considering where we were two years ago. But over the course of time, we are right where the average about falls. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a little bit of that shock value coming off of COVID and those low rates we've had. But when you look at like, I, I mean, I know my parents bought houses at 16% when I was a kid. If you look back at where things have been and what that costs versus that, it's like anything. You have to put it in perspective. Otherwise, you can make the numbers feel or be whatever you kind of want them to be. Absolutely. And the fact of the matter is that 92% of the people that have mortgages in the United States right now are sub 5%. Yeah. So when you're talking 7 plus percent, I think people have that oh my gosh, you know, I don't want to sell my house because I have this great sub 5% rate. Why would I want to move up? And what we learned is people are moving because they have to. Yeah, not necessarily because they want to. Yeah, the trend used to be like, oh, I think I'm going to move. Let's go look and see what is out there. And, you know, they just kind of get an itch and they want to go move. And that's what they used to do. But today we're seeing it that it's more of instead of an I want to move, it's an I need to move. If it's people that are either having babies facing deaths in their family, the jobs transferred, divorce. And so it's kind of out of a necessity now, more so than just a desire. And that's unfortunate. I really do think that right now, and tell me if you agree, but it's a great time to buy, especially if you don't have a lot of cash on hand, because you're not like seeing all these above asking escalation clauses, you know, the things that we were seeing back in 2020, 2021, they really weren't very healthy for well, the overall market. Right. And if you do the math and you look at like a year or two ago, people are paying $50,000 over what the house was worth and having to take it in an as is condition, not being able to ask a seller to repair or fix anything. When you weigh that dollar amount of that 50,000, 100,000 that was over list plus no repair costs, weigh that dollar amount into the difference in your percentage. That sticker shock, I can kind of goes away a little bit and you're able to get into a house right now. Yeah, you're paying a little higher rate, but those rates are temporary and you can get into a house for maybe even a little less than what the list price is. Absolutely. You can get that furnace repaired or those windows repaired or whatever it is that's showing on that inspection item. And you're coming out ahead as a buyer, I think. Absolutely. And guess what? When the interest rates do correct, 
all the buyers who have been sitting around waiting because they want to sell are going to come out of the woodwork and we're going to end up in the and all those buyers that were waiting to buy yeah. are coming out that's what i mean that's yeah what i mean both sides all the sellers that are waiting by the sellers yeah right. exactly so all of a sudden you're going to end up in the same situation we had in 2020 2021 where our clients who maybe have an FHA loan or want some government assistance with the down payment or that kind of thing, there was no way that those clients could get a house in that environment, right. in Denver at least. Right, right. And you think about like, you're set at that price point. So if you have to go in and you offer 50,000, 100,000 over list price, you're set at that. Whereas if you go in and you offer list price or a little below and you're at a higher interest rate, right, you can change that, that, that interest rate. You can't change that purchase price. Absolutely. So, you know, that's something to think about. So as we go forward and talk about some of these things that are changing in the market for today or where the Denver market's at today, I think all of these items are valid things that we need to think about and have you guys think about like, as we are topping these numbers and where they go from here into September, October, November. Yeah, it's food for thought. I mean, knowledge is power. And so we are your base for knowledge and we do this in and out every single day. We see it all the time. We're seeing lenders offer down payment assistance, we're seeing rate buy down, rate buy down, not only from the seller, but also from some lenders and yeah. private institution lenders are offering rate buy down. Yeah. Private financing. There's still some cash happening, cash deals happening, but the cash buyers are actually getting better deals because they are cash and they're sometimes have no competition, but even if they do have competition, they can still get that property for a lower price because they're cash and there's no appraisal and you know, all the things that go with that. Yeah, totally. So where we are today i think like the idea that you know we have these limited inventory historically over the course of 2023 is lower than it's ever been or you know relatively speaking and then you know these buyers that are have to move buyers instead of i want to move buyers what does that mean to you guys as the buyers and so one of the things we're noticing here in denver is that our high price market is kind of flat flat it's dropping you know so those higher price homes are sitting on the market longer they're doing price reduction and then our moderate to low price homes are actually doing pretty well so they're going under contract fairly quick you, you know they're sometimes still under multiple offer situations and incentives coming from the seller side so you know with that I think that means to you watching this, if you're a buyer and you are in a moderate to low priced home and you want to be a move up buyer, which is what we call them when you are really up to the next level of own, this is the market for you because you have the ability to get your current home under contract quickly for a good amount of money with very limited contingencies. Yeah, as long as it's priced pr appropriately, you'll get full price or, or do what we're close, like within yeah. a half oh, for yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, you're going up to this next size home and that is maybe sitting on the market, having to have a price reduction. And so that gives you as the buyer, the power in this situation. So if that's your situation, then, you know, this might actually be the best market for you to buy in. Absolutely. Before all these other buyers come out of the market next summer, next year, two years from now, when the interest rates drop and there's a lot of creative financing right now regardless of whether you're a move up or a move down or a move the same buyer, you're gonna, you know, the creative financing, these lenders are working hard to get options available to you as buyers. Absolutely, we have a long list of creative lenders that um, we can refer based on your situation. You know, they all have different expertise and yeah, we can definitely connect you with somebody to help you with that part. Yeah, so let's maybe go over some of the numbers here. So this is for August of 2023. And this is basically just the various stats of what our Denver market is doing by souls, rates, price reductions, et cetera. So I think, you know, if you look at things in, in August, the average interest rate that we're hearing that people are closing deals for is a roughly about 7.07%. .07%. So that's about where I would have guessed to based on, you know, that takes into account those a little bit higher, that takes into account some of those buyers because that's the average. So doesn't mean it's the best you can get or the worst you can get, it's the average. That is also dependent on like your credit score and on how much money you're putting down. So it's a very dynamic number, but yes, the average, I mean, I would have guessed 7%. So you break, yeah, right, I would have probably guessed a little higher too. So that's, yeah, we're in, pretty much smack dab in the middle. Yeah. So how many houses here in Denver went under contract or active during this last month of August? So in August, uh, single family detached homes, we had a total of 4,273 detached homes currently active on the market in August. 
Of that, uh, we also had attached single family homes. So your condos, your townhomes, it was at 1,751. So those numbers are coming in. The single family detached are about 9.2% less than year over year last year. But this attached homes were 15% higher, more inventory in those single family attached townhomes and condos than there was last year. So then close, you know, of those active properties that were on the market. So there in August, single family detached homes were uh, that actually closed were 2,554, which is a decrease from last year of 11.6%. And of your townhomes and condos, there was 1,149 that were closed in the month of August, and that is about a 10%, 10 percent, 10 and a half percent drop over last year. So, so 10 to 11 percent drop on average between attached and detached, which is because of it. Yep, 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 exactly. Yep, totally. So, so when you're looking at you know days on market and you're you're listing a home, both attached and detached homes were about 26 and 25 days on market respectively. And that's a big increase from last year. So the attached was about a 30% higher increase from last year. That means homes were sitting on the market 30% longer than last year. And the attached homes were coming in at 25 days, which is 66% higher than last year. That's a huge increase it is. that they're sitting on the market longer. And I think it has to come down to make sure you price right. So, well, but also it's healthy. I think that's yeah. what's so important. It wasn't healthy to have houses selling in you know, three days. Exactly, 72 hours. So having 26 days, it's still not healthy. I mean, an average healthy real estate market has six months of inventory on the market. And we're still a month, this at month, month, basically. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So we're still like way off. And so, you know, it's, it's part of where we are right now. And I think that it's going in the right direction, definitely for buyers. And I actually think sellers too, in the grand scheme. Yeah, in the big scheme of things, because oftentimes sellers have to buy somewhere, right? Or do buy somewhere. Sell high, buy high. Sell low, buy low. Yes, up. So that's the difference. You know, and then with that, the price point of where we're seeing people list at and where they actually close at, it's coming in fairly strong. Like, so you're at about 99.5% close to list price. But the interesting thing about that stat is that most times after a price reduction. So detached homes um, are coming on the market higher than they should be. And then, you know, they're having to do that price reduction. And so, you know, the close to the original list price is actually not that 99 percent, it's about 97%. Actually, that's for both detached and attached homes. And so that's showing you that once they do that initial price reduction, which is coming in at about 5% in the month of August, then they're right on line with where they need to be priced instead of coming in super high. I think that's relational to last several years where people thought, oh, well, the house next door sold for X, so I need to list it for 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 higher than right. what they just sold yesterday for. Yeah. It doesn't appreciate that fast. That's just not common sense, and that's not a healthy market. But the average appreciation that we're seeing right now year over year. Thing, this is great. And I'm glad you're hearing crazy things right now about how, oh, it's a slump and yada, yada, yada. But the average price has increased on a single family home year over year, 6% from August of this year to August of last year, or vice versa, August of last year to August of this year. Home prices in the Denver metro area are still appreciating at 6% if you go off the August market statistics. Mm -hmm. That is not what the national news is telling us. That is not what the general public is panicking about. We're still showing appreciation. So that means several things. You have to come in at the right price. You have to know your market. You have to have an agent that knows your market. If you don't, you're leaving money on the table one way or another, whether you're a buyer or a seller. Yeah, and another fact is that if you don't buy a house today because of interest rates, next year that house is going to be 6% more if you, I mean, and following off of these figures. Right, but I mean, that's conservative. I would say 6% is probably around correct. I mean, barring some national disaster or something, but Denver has a really, really healthy market. And so waiting is not going to save you in the long run. If you can buy a house today and get your 2-1 buy down. So what that means is you get a 2% reduction in your interest rate for the first year, and then a 1% the second year to save those hundreds of dollars every month in payment, your house is still going to appreciate, let's just say six, four to 6%, right? So you're gonna be ahead that much more. And then when interest rates correct or you come down, then you can refinance and then you'll still have the lower rate and you will have bought your house at 6% lower than, or, yeah. you know, whatever that time frame is. And if you buy today at 7% or whatever the rate is that you can get, if your house appreciates 6% or the houses that you want to buy appreciate 6%, 
that's not saving you money to wait till next year. No, you buy today at 7%, refinance down the road, and then you've already got 6% equity in a year. Right? That's a smart way to do business, right? So let's rent is 100% interest. Let's call it spade to spade. It is, it is. So, and you know, some people are in situations where they have to rent, but you know, if you're in a position where you can buy, there's so much false information out there about why you shouldn't, why you shouldn't. I mean, those numbers speak for themselves. 6%, where else are you gonna get 6% on your money in this market? Exactly. Okay, so there you have it. There's August 2023, uh, all wrapped up in a pretty bow for you. Uh, if you have any questions about any other aspects of the Denver market, please call us or shoot us a text or send us an email. We will totally help you out. And uh, please subscribe below. Yes, please. And give us uh, comments. Give us your opinion. Let us know what you think about buying, selling, renting, whatever. We want to know and we'll respond. Absolutely. All right. Well, have a great rest of your day.